Chris, thanks for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me, Dan. It's been what a year, year and a half or so since yeah. I was last on. Yeah. We've talked a lot more in the intervening period, <laughs> but uh, basically Amazon, the little company that some of us have heard of at this point, um, what's what's transpired in the last year? What's the what's the lay of the land? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, again, Dan, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, I could love talking about this stuff and um, can talk all day. So, um, but, you know, I think it's important to understand the current landscape of Amazon really, you know, in the last year, but, you know, what's kind of happening before that. Um Amazon is obviously explosive with uh, with COVID. It's now what I refer to as kind of double supernova. Um, and what I mean by that is the retail environment has just shrank, what, 30%. Uh, the shelf space, um, with the exception of maybe grocery, um, all retail has shrunk about 30%. And it's been being poured into Amazon. And so if you have um, a skill set uh, involving Amazon, whether it be you're an agency that knows how to put companies up on Amazon and optimize listings and run ad campaigns, influencer things, um, nurture reviews, those type of things. Or if you're a worker uh, that is a, maybe a creative, uh, if you're an ACD or if you know how to pl- uh, place media, uh, you know, planning and buying, if you're a creative, uh, knows how to do ads and create uh, videos, uh, certain things like explainer videos are big in this space. If you're a programmer, a uh, huge need for API program, it's Amazon API, which is a sort of a rabbit hole in of itself. So any skills in that area, and one of the things I want to convey you know, to your listeners is that if you were to add these skills, you, the current skills you have, but if you add Amazon to it, it's really just explosive environment right now. And so- Yeah, super interesting. So it sounds like there's, there's this ecosystem forming. And can you talk a little bit more about what what constitutes that ecosystem, you know, and, and how, how far it goes. Yeah. So, you know, obviously with COVID again, everything's being poured into online, you know, your behavior and what you've had delivered to your front door and how that's changed since COVID. So that's just simply going hockey stick. And so that environment is, is attracting a lot of, well, first of all, it's brand new. Okay. It's very dot com What I mean by that is it's, 1997, you know, Netscape just launched. And if you were, if you knew HTML or how to make websites, you made a lot of money. Um, if it was 2001 and you knew Google AdWords and, um, you know, you were first among those and you actually could create an agency that was, that made a lot of money placing Google AdWords. And that environment is existing for really a new now with Amazon. Now the marketplace has been around for about seven, well, 20 years now. Um, but in its current form, it's extremely complex to sell on Amazon. There's a lot of things you need to fire on that in the old days, you know, not seven, eight years ago, if you were a seller, it was pretty easy to put something up on, on Amazon and pretty, do pretty well. Well, those days are now much more complex and you need a team of folks uh, working on Amazon. Thus, you have Amazon agencies. And so um, that said, uh, the investment dollars are flowing in here. Uh, the skill sets are flowing in. Um, everything's sort of just a, a land grab. And I would encourage, I would say actually Amazon's in a land grab as well. We're all following them. But it's truly a land grab in, uh, in the space um, from just all aspects. And so again, I would just encourage anybody to add what they do now and just add as an Amazon label to it. Right, right. And I'd love to just understand why, you know, why is it more complex? If, uh, if I'm an e-commerce agency and I, you know, have a brand, can I just throw up an Amazon label and, you know, what, what's, what's made it harder to get right? Sure. So again, if you're looking about time-wise, maybe the last six, seven, eight years, it used to be you, if I was a seller, I could act as an individual. I could probably manage the ad campaign and I could optimize the copy on the listing, probably take a good photo in a, you know, my light box in my, you know, in my den kind of thing. And I could actually sell uh, pretty well. Now it actually is become a, a bit of a, of a nightmare. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you're a brand, especially an existing brand, you might find that other people are selling your brand on Amazon. Okay without your permission. You know, they maybe found your product in a two for bin and they put it up uh, competing with you uh, with your own listing for half the price, 
right? So there's that there's a complexity to brand protection. That's just a whole new world of legal ease that has to occur. How do you protect your brand? How do you register it? Um, how do you track uh, people that are violating it? And ultimately, just again, protect yourself um, from what is the Amazon environment. So that's just one aspect. Um, if you get into international aspects of Amazon, because the barriers now of selling online are extremely low, uh, are, are selling internationally are extremely low. There's 14 other marketplaces, not just Amazon.com, but there's Amazon.ca, .mx, .de, .uk, and on and on. And so you can now sell on those as well. Well, those become tax nightmares. Uh, there's things like VAT tax and that have to be handled. So now you have accountants that are the accounting professionals reacting to Amazon as well. And the complexities of having your inventory being taxed in one state, but being sold in another. Okay. So that industry is being upended. Okay. Never mind logistics, never mind um, hiring, which we can talk about, which is an ex a nightmare in the space. And just every, all, all professions are kind of being dragged, kicking and screaming into this new dot com world, which is Amazon.com. Yeah. And it seems like, you know, for, for our audience, for the agency world, and for those that we've talked to that really get Amazon, it's almost like they're really behaving like consultancies, you know, more, more like a, an outstretched arm of the company, as opposed to just fitting neatly into a sales and marketing silo. And it's, it seems like, you know, a lot of it is managing inventory and figuring out, okay, if we really do blow up our, our client's site and they get, you know, or not site, Amazon listing, and they get, you know, 10x the amount of purchases, they might not have enough inventory. So now we've got to deal with inventory, we're dealing with inventory, now we've got to deal with the warehouse and, yep. you know, and then onwards and onwards. So first, I'd love to just hear, you know, how, how closely that maps to to your perspective, which is a lot more than mine and um, where you think it's heading. Yeah, it's just, it, again, it's just very, uh, very complex. Uh, so, uh, you know, I may be able to be given the option or may or may not be given the option to apply for the ability to send a product. I receive the orders and send them direct, directly out of my warehouse or my back room. Or I can obviously ship them off to Amazon for FBA and have them store it until it's sold. And the complexities of inventory control um, go very deep for a company that's selling, you know, hundreds uh, of thousands of units a month and how to manage all that. So again, just a very small slice of logistics or fulfillment that's just completely upended. Um, and never mind that you never, you don't have a distributor anymore. You don't sell to the, you know, to a regional sales department, to the retail environment. You're now dealing with Amazon, which is completely different also. Now you touched on one thing, um, and, you know, that's the aspect of, you know, kind of, um, you know, if you're all the things an agency does, which I know, I think there's your listeners are so, you know, there are many agencies out there. So I'm talking to them directly. Um, and I, there are all types of agencies, whether it be media or ad or creative or, you know, influence or social, whatever they may, may be, there's a mapping of their skill set to the Amazon world. And so all of the, the, the tools are more rudimentary. Okay, you might laugh at the tools like, oh, I've got this, I've, I've, for 20 years, I've been using this social media tool and it doesn't do Amazon, right? But it, the, the reason, the, the, the good news is that, that that creates a vacuum or an opportunity for everyone to then run to that, which is, you know, makes them less, you know, less competitive environment. Uh, yeah, I, I guarantee that, you know, clients will come to you if you have these skills versus going out and finding them. Um, no, no. You know, still use Dan's uh, service, still use uh, sales schema, of, of course. Um, but, you know, really, I think the success and the close rate you're going to find is going to be completely different on this side of the equation. Yeah, I'd love to, to dig into that a little bit more. So it sounds like, you know, with when you're talking about inventory management and, and you know, brand protection and, and tax and all these different things, it sounds like you're moving into skill sets that a lot of agencies, if not most agencies, do not have yet, right? Sure. Like you're, so so in, in your estimation, like how many, you know, organizations actually get Amazon right now? Like how many companies can actually get it right now? Sure, sure. So um Right now, I, I work with, and, and I should just touch briefly on what InReach does. Um, I'm basically a vetted network of resources for Amazon. And I match typically to seller or a brand to a resource. And so to clarify, one of the things I'd said, you know, yes, your agency could help you with logistics. Normal agency, your regular ad agencies don't, for instance, touch on legal issues or tax issues 
or logistics or so on and so forth. And those are separate roles. And what I meant by that is those people that exist in the old world, the non-Amazon world, are also coming in. But let's focus, if you focus just on ad agency services, typical agency services, there is a mapping for everything you do or they do over to the Amazon world. Um, and so, um, and you know, one thing you also mentioned is that if you, because it's a contained environment, you're actually not just a marketing agency, okay? If you're helping people up putting their listings up and you're helping them run their campaigns and, and things like that, you're actually at the controls of their sales, okay? So I'll give you an example. Back, you know, back in the, in the old days, if you spent, you know, a, a marketing agency might suggest, hey, let's run a $2 million Super Bowl ad, okay? We think well, we know they say that that, that gets us a billion eyeballs, and we think the ROI from that over time over the years, brand, brand exposure is going to be X. Okay, if you in the Amazon environment, if you spend that, you're actually going to have data back in real time in the form of sales immediately. And so you can do things like A B testing, uh, you can target your client. So we can talk about things like Amazon DSP and some of the things that uh, the targeting that could be done there. But really, you're now, since you're in the Amazon world, you now have uh, tools, or I should say data and interactions with your client that you wouldn't have outside of Amazon. So that Super Bowl commercial, if you spent $2 million on an ad, which I would not suggest, on an Amazon ad, you would know immediately whether or not you had the sales that proved the ROI on that. And so that's the difference here is I think, you know, rather being a marketing agency or an ad agency, you, I, I try to convince or I talk to brands that you're actually hiring somebody that is at the controls of your sales. And that's a slight difference because of the environment that we're dealing with. But. Yeah, it, it almost reminds me of like a Star Trek Enterprise situation where you, you have this like one central command post that just you know, uh, digs into so, so many parts of the business and, right. and so right. on from there. So, and so, and so what would you, yeah. you know, what would you spend just not to interrupt you, but what would you spend, uh, or what would you, when you hire an agency, you would, I think the opportunity there is to charge more because you are that important role. And so again, another reason to add Amazon label, right. Um, forgive me for the fourth time, uh, is that I think you, you know, in this, you can charge a premium and you can actually get your hourly rate and you can actually get paid and you don't necessarily have to argue about, the monthly bill and those type of things can get larger and larger clients with larger and larger buildings if you add Amazon. So, yeah. And I'm just sort of putting myself in the place of, well, let's say, you know, an e-commerce focused agency, maybe you've, you've historically built funnels around Facebook or Instagram or something else. And you're like, okay, now we got to figure out Amazon. Great. We'll go, you know, throw up a, a listing. We'll take some photos. And then it sounds like a lot of agencies that have probably dip their toe in that water have now run into all the problems that go along with that. Either you're not successful or you are successful and you run out of inventory uh, and so on and so forth. So I guess I'd love your thoughts on just like how feasible is it really for an agency to adapt to this landscape? Like if somebody's dipping, dipping into it for the first time, like who, who are you, who are you hiring? How are you going about it? Sure. Sure. And you know, it is a natural progression for an e-commerce uh, company. You know, obviously they would be able to spot it sooner. Um, you know, if you have Spotify skills, you're probably competing with Amazon, you know, in uh, for sales, and so you're you're aware of these things. But you know, how difficult is it? It just like any other computer skill, you've got to dive into it. A lot of it's going to be self learning. Um, the problem in this space right now is you cannot hire for this stuff. Uh, the skills are such that um, you know a one to two year person with say Amazon PPC skills uh, is going for about 150k right now one to two years, you know, straight out of college. Um, uh, the largest agency in the space is about 200 people. About 60 of those employees come from the Philippines. Okay. So there's two important things to grab there. One is the largest agency in the space is 200 people. I mean, the largest traditional agency is what, 10,000? So that's how early it is um, to emphasize that. But, you know, that said, it's so early that there's nobody that knows how to do this stuff um, without a concentrated effort. And that has come from the Philippines, from the government, and teaching how to run an Amazon PPC campaign or do SEO or do Amazon influence or affiliate or uh, and on and on. And those, yeah. So how do you learn this stuff? You, I would suggest, uh, uh, you know, following the uh, environment, following the leaders in the space, see what they're publishing. There's a lot of uh, free materials out there on how to learn how to do this stuff. A lot of different niches to run down as well. And so um, 
but there's no book, quote unquote book or certification classes in the space or a developer environment at all. Wow. Wow. So it's, it really is that the web 1.0 situation and just yep. this little sidebar. That's super interesting. So the Filipino government has been investing in training people on Amazon and so on. Yeah. So they learned well over the last 15 years that they, uh, about the whole, you know, if you, if you were to get a VA, uh, odds are like a virtual assistant, um, that to help you as an executive, you probably were getting it from the Philippines over the last 10, 15 years. They're uh, native English speaking, highly uh, educated, um, and also, I think it's 13 hours on the other side of the globe, which helps for for support and things like that. But that said, the government noticed that success and from on high uh, said, we're going to really train a uh, uh, in the university system um, and retrain our, our workforce to be a more of a technical workforce. And so graduating VAs into actual having technical skills. And one of those things is Amazon skills. Um, and again, how to run an Amazon PPC campaign. And the only place that you can hire someone right now is from the Philippines as a result of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's super interesting. So it's, it sounds like there's like precious few organizations that actually can, can maneuver in this space. Like, uh, is that, has that been your observation too? And where do you see that, that heading? Yeah. Well, I, mean, I know, uh, uh, for instance, M and A agents, which are you know the guys that buy and sell companies in this space, I know of three of them. Okay, um, that's how early it is. I know of one agency that does Amazon Fresh, which is a different ball game. Um, how to sell grocery through Whole Foods? There's only one agency in the world that knows how to do that. So yeah. you know, and just emphasizing this. So we're, we're, to come full circle, if you're an agency or an individual that knows how to you know knows how to do this stuff in the e-commerce world. Come step over, drink the Kool Aid, um, and come over because uh, it, you will be instantly, you know, two X in value or something along those lines. So, cool. right, right. And with, with that in mind, um, I'd love to learn more about Amazon DSP. And for those, and also, I think a lot of our audience knows what a what a DSP is. But for those that don't, it's a demand side platform. It's a platform to buy and serve ads, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so most again, just to add to that definition, most uh, large platforms like Facebook, Facebook, or uh, well, anything Google or Amazon have uh, properties around. Uh, obviously, they have a huge uh, ad buying uh, network, and they place those ads on properties that are outside of Amazon.com um, for display. Um, that may say click through to wherever you send them. Or uh, the, the other thing is that's important is that am, a lot of people, in fact, the, the number one uh, advertiser on amazon.com is actually State Farm. And so they don't have a product on Amazon, but they're using the targeting, the audience, and obviously the number one product search engine, the activity there uh, they want to be a part of. And so that's really Amazon DSP in a, in a poorly def- definition, um, in a poor definition. But those skills, uh, if you are a unicorn and you have Amazon skills, if you have Amazon DSP skills, you're now a unicorn, you know, rainbow with sparkles. Um, uh, the skill sets there are uh, extremely valued because in the traditional ad agency world, I had a console where I could plan my media spend. I could say this much TV, this much radio, this much goes up to Facebook, you know, the digital spend, I'll do AdWords here and there, but there's no button for Amazon yet. And so you actually have to go over to a different console, the Amazon console, which you have to have learned and, and know how to map all of the things that you do onto that. So again, just a highly coveted skill set. And what a natural jump for a media agency to just add Amazon DSP you know, to their repertoire. And by the way, it's also taking about a third of all of the ad dollar, digital ad dollars in the world right now. Wow. Wow. And, and such few companies actually get it. So, and, and it's, it, it's also super unique as, as a demand side platform where, you know, everything else is built on the idea of people doing other things while you serve ads to them, you know, whether it's uh, browsing on, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever it might be with Amazon, people are there to buy things already. So it's, it's super right. fascinating to see what's going to come out of that. Yeah, well, it's the number one product search engine, obviously, um, and uh, you know that that gives it an immense amount of leverage. And obviously, the data that comes with that is ridiculous. I I, I think I might have mentioned this maybe last time, but there's a new. Well, actually, it came out since then. Uh, there's an Amazon or there's a PBS Frontline documentary on Amazon. It's called um, 
uh, Amazon Empire. I highly recommend it. It came out about nine months ago. Um, and in there, they touch, they touch on the expansion and all the things. It sets a context to what this conversation. But uh, in there also is just, um, you know, the data that they have on you. I think about half of the, uh, the, the documentary, it's a two-hour documentary, is just about the data and the responsibility that comes with that because they know what you buy, when you buy, how you buy it, how you you know, and so on and so forth. If you're in a buying mode, there's no other place than Amazon to be and also to target and those those places as well. And again, Amazon DSP gets you all of the targeting information better than Facebook. Amazon knows more about you than Facebook, you know, more than Twitter, more than all of those. And they can use all of that to target an ad to you that you actually might enjoy receiving, believe it or not. So, yeah. And you, you can't even like begin to wrap your head around the sort of connections that you can make through, through a DSP like that. You know, if you were buying certain things for the home, then there's insurers that would want to serve ads to you or cars or just what about echo infinite. infinite. Yeah. What about echo? I mean, echo's listening to you. I I don't know if you have one in the house, but I I've caught it listening to me. So, you know, so, you know, does it, could you serve an ad then there, or, you know, it's just a huge amount of responsibility, but regardless is that the, the targeting is that the, and I would also uh, say that uh, Amazon's being a very aggressive with pricing as well. They're making it extremely attractive because they want to take more of that 30, they're growing. I think it was, uh, uh, last uh, last time I checked, it was five years ago. It was like twenty percent, and now they're at thirty percent, and it's growing. So they want to take more and more of that ad dollars from Facebook and and everyone else. Uh, so they're lowering the price as well. So targeting price um, skill set, it's it's extremely uh, extremely attractive. Yeah, yeah, that's that's super interesting. And, and um, Chris, you know, I'd love to just learn kind of what what else is on the horizon. Like, what you're making connections all the time. You know, what what are some of those connections you're typically making, and the, the sort of work you're doing? Yeah, uh, my day is consumed either matching a brand to an agency, which is difficult. It's like a marriage, right? Uh, to, to to hire an agency to do it properly, and and that's where I provide value. I think, uh, but the other half of my day is spent. Um, uh, working in the VC realm and the private equity that's going come pouring into the Amazon space. Uh, I spend most uh, a good chunk of my day looking for agencies that are willing to sell uh, Amazon agencies that may be two or three years old. They may be 20 employees and they're going for somewhere between five and 25 X right now. That's amazing because everybody needs this skill set. You can't hire for it. And so the way to, if you're a big brand or another agency and you need to just get a department of folks, you're going to go out and buy it and plunk it down, right? And so that right now, that's the biggest thing is those extreme ridiculous dot-com valuations out there. They're, they're happening again with agencies, with employees, with um, with any business that involves itself with Amazon, it's really just another gold rush, another dot com gold rush. Yeah, and it sounds like just because there's such such a small amount of, of human capital, so to speak, going into that world. So yeah, absolutely. So that, that, that's the that's the sexy thing going on. Since uh, just to add to that, uh, nine months ago there was a company called Thras, uh, T H R A S I O, I believe is what their name is. Um, they were the fastest evaluation to a billion dollars in U.S. history, and so what they're doing is they've got uh, they just got another 450 million of cash to go buy Amazon brands, and so brands that have success succeeded on Amazon, maybe it's like a you know a startup uh, food seasoning, or maybe it's a dog toy or something that's a darling that's killing it on Amazon. Well, these companies are going by and buying them up on mass. I think. Thras owns about 200 brands right now um, to a tune of a billion dollars. Um, and they're polishing them and growing them up on Amazon um, and selling them off. And so that's a billion dollar idea as well. So all of that has brought the just a gold rush of folks into the space. Um, not that it wasn't happening anyway, but COVID, you know, I feel guilty for, for even selling, saying this, but COVID helped uh, in the space. I mean, Amazon is benefiting as a result of COVID, maybe that's the best way to say it. Yeah, that's that's unquestionable for sure. And as a quick sidebar, I, I guess like um, there's there's some brands that have like put their foot down and decided not to interact with Amazon. And I think in this, you know, and there, there's a few that come to mind. And I have also just seen ideas of just interesting ways in which you know brands are interacting with Amazon. I forgot who it was. Maybe I want to say Untuck it. I apologize if that's wrong, but. 
um, you know, some brands that are saying, Hey, we're going to put our new stuff on our own site. And then the, the old stuff's going to go on Amazon. Like, are there, are there any interesting case studies you're seeing along those lines? Yeah. Well, the, the most interesting one is, uh, well, is anchor, um, sort of uh, born on Amazon, uh, took on the Am- uh, the iPhone accessory space. Think about the most competitive space on Amazon uh, and killed it and went public. Uh, so that was another huge thing that's happened in the last nine months, which again is bringing capital in. But um, yeah, there are, you have to solve for Amazon. So to answer your question, are there success stories? Yes, because this is where the sales are going. So if you if you've made it onto Amazon, You've succeeded, and I think you will find it as a channel that's worth pursuing. Um, versus, if you don't, um, your competitor is. So, right, right, cool. So, kind of uh, bringing this to a close uh, for for those agencies that might be looking for help and might be looking for personnel and so on. How, how can people get in touch with you? Sure, sure. Um, I'm in Reach.com. I think it's up there, and um, but I'm yeah. Chris at InReach. Um, and uh, just reach out. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn as well. I love to have conversations. I learn something about Amazon every day and I'm happy to teach it as well. So, Awesome. Chris, thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me on.